Hey, everybody. Welcome back to another episode of Dented Cans. It's your host, Mike Fenoya. Uh, as always, I want to give a quick shout out to our sponsor, Sunset Lake CBD. High quality CBD products from Burlington, Vermont, home of the Catamounts, the shirt I'm wearing right now. Uh, Vermont's a great state. And the, 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 the gummies, the tinctures, the salves, the oils, you name it, everything at Sunset Lake is top notch. And if you go to Sunset Lake CBD and use promo code DENTED at checkout, D-E-N-T-E-D, you get 20% off your entire purchase. Sunset Lake CBD promo code DENTED for 20% off. Uh, if you're enjoying the podcast, like, share, rate, review, all that stuff, that's free for you to do, but it goes a long way. Uh, I hope you're all well. Honored to be bringing one of my friends, a comic I love and admire, and I'm so stoked to chat with him, Mr. Look at that beautiful smile, Michael Somerville. How are Woo! you, my friend? I am great now because you just made me feel so special and important. <laughs> it's always <laughs> great to see you. You're someone that, like, when I see the lineup, I'm like, Yes. Oh, thank you, man. I know that feeling because I actually feel the same way. I, and we were at Gotham last weekend and they didn't post it online. And I always look ahead, go, who am I working with? Who am I working with? And then you get there and I was thrilled to see you. And plus, you gave me a ride home. I did. I did. Yes. Dynamite <laughs> lineup, a dynamite ride home. It was short, but yeah, uh, that's probably a, best. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Long rides are, isn't that weird? Like, like, have you had like in the early days, did you kind of like do that whole like, let's ride together. Let's do this. Let's do that. And then you're 30 seconds into the ride and you're like, this next 10 hours is going to be fucking brutal. It's going to be brutal. You try to, it's like vetting somebody for a date. I mean, you don't know, <laughs> right. It's and you, and especially if it's like, you get a call from a random person, like, you know them, but you don't really know them. Like, Oh, we're doing a gig together in Ohio. You know how you get in there. And you're always like, ah, I don't know. And I always had the excuse. My parents live in Jersey. And I, a lot of times I would steal one of their cars to go to a gig. And so I always had that as an out. I'm like, I'm not leaving from New York, man. Like, I'm going to be in Jersey visiting. And then, so, yeah. But, um, and, and I also think since, like, you know, satellite radio and all the stuff we can listen to now, podcasts and all the stuff you can listen to in a car Baseball now, games. You're, yeah, I mean, who needs a person? <laughs> no, it's better. I, I, Dude, you know, a lot of people even say that, like, about, you know, I live outside the city and people are like, doesn't it suck driving in and out alone? And I'm like, no, it's right. phenomenal. I mean, yeah, traffic blows every now and then, but it's like the car has my food, my smells, my music, my temperature. Yes. You know what I that mean? Like worst case, as long as I keep in mind that I'm not on the train or not stuck on the R under the East River. Then 100%. It makes it all go away. You know, well, and I've lived in Manhattan since my adult life. Like I've a whole, I moved from college right to New York, and I've been here. So I've never really had a car, and so when I do, it's in my favorite thing. When I go on the road and rent a car, it's like driving around in your high school locker, right? You're just like, that is all my stuff, and I got everything, and no one's talking to me. And yeah, I mean, it's glorious. high school locker. That's great. <laughs> You're like, I got fucking Cheryl Teagues hanging up in the fucking car. You're frozen uh, again. You're frozen. I know. I'm sorry. We're going to have to and, figure that out. But I'm I'm here. It's just this dumb. I don't know. It's some setting. So every oh, okay. now and then. We, if we're audio only, I won't call it out. No, sorry. no, no. We're video. <laughs> it's just. Uh, but yeah, I remember I was doing a festival when I first started out and some guy hit me up and he was like, yo, let's room together for the week. And I'm like, no immediately like and, and it was i was broke i was beyond yeah. broke i mean yeah. like literally like it was first year or two of comedy it's like i'm googling like does bankruptcy really fuck you that long you know <laughs> <laughs> i have uh, been there yeah. seven years i did the reading it's like seven years you're out of it <laughs> not that bad you get a credit card right away it's not a big deal but That's um amazing. he hit me up and he's like you want a room together and i was like no my brother's coming out to visit and he you know like that <laughs> you always have to have some i just don't i don't know man like i had enough of those things did you have a life before comedy like did you do a lot of jobs or was it pretty oh. much no, not a lot of jobs, but I did have a regular job. I started messing around with stand-up in college. So once I moved to New York, I got a real job in advertising at like a real company. Yeah. I did that for five years. But um, so I did have a sort of life, you know, kind of before it. But I always had my, you know, toe in the water. Yeah. Yeah. See, I didn't. And and I had like a, I had a corporate sales job for like six, seven oh, years before. You were a regular person? Oh, dude, I was a lot of different people. Yeah. <laughs> 
<laughs> I was a music journalist. Are. I mean, well, yeah, like I was a music journalist right out of college. And that was like my dream was to be like the, the you know, like editor of Rolling Stone or like a, like Hunter Thompson. Really? Yeah, I'm a big music nut, and I got a gig. I interviewed Ken Kesey, the you know the guy who wrote Cuckoo's Nest. Yeah, and uh, he died right after I interviewed him, so I had his one of his oh, final shit. interviews. I'm, I'm gonna end this call now. Is that, that <laughs> <way>? <laughs> too late, too late. <laughs> oh no! I have proof. <laughs> Just stay inside for like the next 24 hours. You should be fine. <laughs> Just check the gas. No, he was sick. I didn't know it. I went out there. He had died. He had like liver cancer or failure or whatever. But anyway, I had like one of the uh, final interviews with him, and I. Uh, published it in a music magazine and traded the interview essentially for a gig writing. And I got to review concerts and travel. I went to the first Bonnaroo and like, you know, interviewed bands and so on and so forth. And like, that was cool, but it didn't pay. It was like everything I loved. I I, I was talking about this earlier. Like I never knew patience was an option growing up. Like I kind of felt like no one ever told me like, yeah, take your time in 10 years, 12 years, it'll be, you know, like, you got to put in your time. I thought if it doesn't happen now, Uh, it's never going to happen. So a lot of my life was like, you know, I did this for a minute and then I'm like, nah, it's not going to happen. So music journalism was one of those things. And then I was dating a girl whose dad was like killing it in sales. And they kind of talked me into going into sales. They're like, you'd be great at it. And I hate it. It was the worst experience of my life. It was just, I did good because I was honest and I stuck, I, I, I honestly did pave the way for like the marathon versus the sprint. I'd have a couple bad months, but in the long run, I never lost clients and stuff like that. But I learned how to, uh, I had to go on trips with people. I had to share rooms with like oh. old geezers that were kind of like, you know, moth eaten suits and then Uh, douchebaggy new guys and new suit. And I just, I hated it, but I learned from it. And I, and I, and I brought that mentality into stand up where it's like, no, I don't want to, I've already roomed with that guy. Like I don't want to room with the comedy, that guy. (laughs) Right. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. That version of it. (laughs) You know what I mean? Like it was. Yeah. Where'd you go to college before you moved to the city? I went to Notre Dame out in Indiana. Oh, get uh, the hell out. Yeah, yeah. Big fight in Irish, you know, fan growing up. And, uh, you yeah, know, but went to Catholic school in Jersey. That was, it was a big theater. Like a lot of people, we had 100 kids in our class. I think 12 of them went to Notre Dame. So it was like one of those schools. Yeah. Um, yeah, around. but, but exactly, exactly. It's like every year, you know, X amount, and then who, and whoever doesn't get in goes to Boston College. Um, but <laughs> <laughs> no disrespect, Boston. No, uh, no. Yeah. yeah. But that's I, I'm just it's I'm laughing about your life, man, because it was like you were a road comic before you were a comic. I mean, doing that and and traveling and doing I mean, that's just do you feel like that experience informed? Like, did it help your comedy? Did you use it at all? Do you? Yeah, I mean, that's so. Yeah, I still do. I think that the. um, You know, just like in comedy, I think that I think the thing that translates to any gig. Is that there's you have your hacks. And then you have like your your priors and your Carlins and your, you know, the, the guys who change the game and girls yeah. who change the game. And they're like, you know, the outliers that maybe don't follow the corporate whatever rules. Sure. And you got your people who are just your ass kissing suck up <laughs> any. You know what I mean? Like, and we yeah. have that. We have that. But the thing that I think was the presentation side of things was you had to be liked in a matter of seconds yeah if you went in with kind of like you know if your cologne entered the room before you did (laughs) yeah probably not going to get that sale you know what i mean (laughs) but like if you go in and you go hey i don't know everything but we have a good product i work for a payroll company so that the sales that i did was like adp and paychecks they were like you outsource your payroll to them and they take care of all of like the tax liability and the direct deposit and all that stuff. So I would go into like businesses and kind of have this like pitch that we had to memorize. That was kind of like, I'll ask you a question, walk me through your payroll process, chief operating officer. But I already knew what you were going to say. And I knew that time cards were an issue and overtime and this and that. So I had, benchmark points where i knew i can solve your problems oh gosh but i had to play along and go like okay so from what i'm hearing if you had a solution that was blah 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 
So it was crowd work. Yeah. <laughs> but <laughs> you know what I mean? Like it, it really did yeah. equate to, but the thing that I think might you kind of I... like crowd work, you sort of kind of knew what you were going to go, where you're going to go with it anyway. Not always. Sometimes we're really right. in the moment, but other times it's like, ah, I got a singer for this. But it also, ca- it, it, I think helped me get the first year jitters out of like someone not being interested. Yeah. yeah. You know what I'm saying? Cause there were times Absolutely. when people went like, yeah, I'll make an appointment with you just cause I feel, you know, whatever, like, or they're using you to get a quote for, to, to lower the price on the vendor they're already using or something yeah. like that, you know, where we have folks that are at a club that are like apathetically, like, just go ahead and do your thing. I'm just here. Cause my friend wants to be here go, go and ahead. you got to yeah. learn how to handle that. But that's amazing. Yeah. This one guy, oh, motherfucking th- this one guy that I, uh, it's at least it's a good thing. At least it's not like a middle finger. It does freeze you though. in the funniest faces. I know this, uh, one guy that, uh, I worked with, Old Italian dude from Queens, right? And he didn't follow any of the rules, any of the corporate rules. But he would go into his job was to like retain clients that were upset. So like he was like the relief pitcher, okay. right? So like the company, the the normal guy, the sales douche guy that would go in and promise the world and not deliver, who would get fired quick. They'd go to this guy. And he was like the the savior and he'd go in and I went on the road with him a couple of times. And right away, he said, three things matter. He goes, and this is all I believe. He goes, I like you. I trust you. And I want to do business with you. He goes, that's the reason why people will do business with me. And it's why I've done good. He goes, I don't know anything about the shit that we sell. (laughs) He goes, I don't know anything. It's payroll, I guess. But he would literally just go in and he'd tell these people. I'm sure that we've made mistakes. I'm sure like he literally disarmed them. Yeah. And, and instead of just saving the business, he would upsell with other shit. And it's just uh, um, the things he pulled off were like out of this world. And I'm kind of like, I remember that um, all the time with stand up, where it's like, it doesn't matter who you saw before me or who yeah. you're going to see after me. It's just that like, I want you to like immediately know that like, we can have like a, a, a connection here now and hopefully yeah. you want more. And that's, you know what I mean? So it may not that's be cool. that kind of bells and whistles coming up being loud and whatever, but it's like more of just like, here's me. I hope you like it. Yeah. Yeah. No, that's amazing though. I hadn't, I mean, I didn't, when I asked, I was wondering if there was any crossover, but there sounds like there's a lot of, I mean, a lot of parallels and a lot of experiences. Uh, and you're right. Not needing laughs is a, an amazing skill to learn. Like I don't, you know, the, I don't need the audience to approve. <laughs> you know? yeah, yeah. That that's, takes time. Yeah. It takes a lot of time. I still haven't gotten it. Although I do think pandemic Zoom shows got me a long way there. <laughs> <laughs> by, by about an, you know a year into the pandemic, when I was just having people stare at me on these screens, and I'm going, "Oh, I can just do a monologue, I guess." And I yeah, was, totally. You know, I that know. Guys asleep on his couch, and uh... <laughs> but you're a killer, Mike. I mean, you have like oh, Michael. Thanks. You're a ki- you have like y- you hack in a, in a 15 minute set you're telling 60 jokes. Like you have that, like you're a joke machine. Like uh, there's no fat in your set. It's fear of silence. I, when I first started, man, I was so terrified of being on stage and having quiet and, you know, like going 20 or 30 seconds without hearing the audience approve of me. And I, I just like, I wanted to get to the next punchline as quickly as I could. I think that's why, but I appreciate the compliment. And yeah, it's really, it's, it's sheer terror. <laughs> still it's still sheer terror huh absolutely yeah if i go i've tried so many times to do stories like i because i'll tell a good story in a bar with my buddies man i'll tell a story and it'll be fun i'll you know, I, it, I cannot on stage go more than 15 or 20 seconds without getting approval it's like it's I sad <laughs> it's not sad it's not sad it's i i completely understand what you're saying and i and i I'm I'm like blown away by the people that can do that, that just lean in and tell like a 15 minute story. Right. And it's like, holy shit. Right. <laughs> how do you feel like anything you're saying is worth listening to right now? That's how I feel about myself, I, not them. hundred percent. Me yeah. too. Did you just sit on the stool? You're sitting on the stool. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Wait a minute. I'm sorry, Charles Dickens. Fucking. <laughs> It's it's work. amazing, but then you're the people you're at work right now, and the people that do it, I mean, you know, 
it, it, it's also like, you know, to the crowd work thing where it's like, you know, Big J is my he's a, a brother to me. Right. I love him with all my heart. He does something that I, I, I'm I, he's a master of it. And his crowd work is like dirty and sweet and yep. connecting and no one's alienated and it's all on him. Like and I watch him do it and it's like literal alchemy. Right. Yeah. And, and I don't want to do that. But I I like a little I like a little a little dash of that where I sure. can take a minute and have a real moment with a crowd member. Yeah. But I also wish I kind of had the guts of like a DC Benny is a guy who like you watch him tell a story and it's just I mean, his whole set could be one story. Yeah. He has faith in the story. So I have faith listening. Yeah. yeah. I don't have faith in any of my stories where it's like. <laughs> How do we do that? How do you get over that? Like, have you tried and like, I have, I, I, I mean, I've never, I, I've tried I mean, a story for me literally might be a minute. Like I'll be like, this is the bravest thing I've ever done. on stage. <laughs> <laughs> this is, I just, I, I did three sentences with three no sentences intention of getting like, a left. <laughs> that was a three huge sentences story. Three sentences is a novel. I'm with you. Right. And I was Dick. wondering for those guys, are they, do they have any of the fear that we have? Are they up there dying ever going inside? Like this is like, like big, big J is a great example. I mean, that guy's so comfortable. He's just so present and so in his skin and the moment you know in his shoes you're just like this is he afraid is he scared at all i i, I don't and they don't feel it, right i think they're just wired differently they're they're just i remember a comic early on when i was starting people always talk about oh how do you do comedy it's so crazy i can't imagine being on stage with a room full of people listening to me right. and um it is just that scares the hell out of me and i remember this comic i don't remember who it was but they said i can't imagine being in a room full of people who are not listening to me <laughs> and i was like that is that's it's the truth up. it's yeah, the truth right did, um, did did you find that before comedy you were more extroverted or more introverted or did it like switch when you started to do stand-up because personally i was like incredibly extroverted out of fear I think I wanted everyone yeah. to like me, but now that I'm doing stand up, I, I, the minute I'm off stage, I just want to be like alone with like the two or three friends that I love. And that's it. That is amazing. I've, I've never even thought about that. A hundred percent. Same exact. That is exactly. Oh, yeah? That's unbelievable. I never thought about that. I was absolutely extroverted, bit of a class clown, wanted attention, a uh, bit of, not a peacock. I mean, not one of those obnoxious guys who's like, look at me, look at me, but definitely was doing stand up not without knowing I was doing it. <laughs> yeah. And then the 100% now it's like I was dating this girl, but I'm married now, but before that dating a girl who said I found the greatest bar ever, you'd love it. And uh I go, why? She was cuz it's clean and empty. And I was like, "Oh, that sums me up. After a show, I want to be alone. Give me one or two people, give me a empty bar with a beer, but I remember we were on the road in Ohio and this, this local comic was like, we got to go to that bar because that's where everyone from the show goes. And I was like, are you out of your mind? <laughs> like, oh, my God. That's a nightmare. Yeah. Yeah. He wanted to get the applause and maybe meet a girl or something. I was like, God, no, no. Yeah. Let's go. No. Let's go to the hotel bar. The day's in with a six pack. <laughs> yeah. Let's go sit in my room. Yeah, yeah. Seriously. Like, I genuinely don't want that. And And as a kid or even, you know, whatever, like the sales stuff. If we went out and we had outings or we had events or if I was with my friends and it wasn't anything like I went into the night going like, oh, I'm going to own the night. I'm going to tell the best story. It just happened. couple drinks in and I'm bebopping and scatting around the room, you know, <laughs> now literally it's like I I, I, I want to go late. I want to leave early. I want to yeah. be, you know, like only if, you know, and I'm very happy that I was able to hang on to a couple friends from growing up because I can go be that's, me with them. Exactly. That's, they don't care anything about what you're doing. They're not impressed with that. Yeah. And you're, you are, you revert to those roles. They, the way they treated you, you still get treated. The names they called you, whatever. Everything's the same. Yeah. Well, I was, I remember years ago, probably before I was even in entertainment, maybe dabbling, but there was an, I saw an interview with uh, Gloria Estefan from the Miami sound machine. And it was, she, I remember her saying, because at the time to me, anyone who was famous celebrity on a stage on a concert was just like this larger than life. And I'm like, what do you do after the show? Where does this go? Do you get on a jet to Vegas right away? Just because you got to keep the, I mean, and I remember her saying like, people would be amazed. I go back to my hotel room, I order a chicken sandwich and I have some water and I go to bed. And I'm like, you were just on stage, you know, at the time, Miami sandwich scene was rocking it everywhere. And 
doing and the like conga that, across the yeah, country yeah, that's right come on baby and i just I, it blew my mind to be like oh you're just a human being who goes to a hotel room and goes to sleep and, like, and then i was like how do you even go to sleep your mind must be racing you were just in front of thousands of people yeah just uh, so yeah and i would say when i first started god i didn't come home at all uh yeah, i first started doing spots in new york city i was like this is the greatest thing ever you can go out after and you can meet people and this is the night's never over now it's like man like you said when you offered to drive me home the other night it was the greatest moment of my life because I'm like, I'm going to be home like 19 minutes faster than I would have been. <laughs> <laughs> and I couldn't wait. <laughs> it was like in Goonies, but I'm like, you're going to live with me now. And you're like, <laughs> you got all excited. You're like, exactly. really? That no, but it's, best. well, and I, and I, and I genuinely mean this and I don't, you know, I wouldn't, I wouldn't offer anyone. No, no, I mean, dude, I don't mean it like that at all, but it's just this thing of like, you're someone who immediately I feel comfortable with that. It's the opposite of what we were talking about earlier, where it's like, if I had to drive you 45 minutes up the road, I knew it would have been fine. If it doesn't right. matter whether it's for you're at that frequency that like, I feel like we connected immediately where it's like, now oh, this is a real person. There are folks in our thing that like, if we weren't doing comedy, I don't think I would hang out with them. But then there 100%. are folks immediately, like if we were at a, event together i think we just kind of would find each other over a guinness and just immediately 100%. be friends well because some i mean comics love all comedians anyone who does it i always you know you're part of the brotherhood but you know some comics are just on all the time and they don't know how to just like be just chill and present you know and you, and you don't you because so you don't let down your guard you're always like oh i don't i don't feel like i can just relax with this person um but yeah, did you, did you see that story? Was it uh, Seinfeld and Chris Rock? They both happened. I guess Seinfeld was, they were at some big Hollywood, the yeah, A-list celebrity thing, one of those post parties for an award show, whatever, and just feeling totally out of their skin. And, you know, like, ugh, you know, Leonardo DiCaprio, all those people here, and they just didn't know how to relate. And I guess from across the room, Seinfeld and Chris Rock see each other and they just like, and they go, thank God, a comedian. And they, you know, just, and they just hide in the corner for the rest of the night. Like, yeah, That's it. Just, yeah. Yeah. Someone yep. you can just chill with and be real. Yeah. And even among our own, sometimes it's like, you know, we have to do that where it's just like, yeah, you don't need to be on the minute I get off stage. I'm, I'm off. Yeah, exactly. I, I, I can't be on I, even sometimes when I'm up there. And that's, I think, where I'm trying to go with comedy is where can I, I can I be off up there and still be good? I, you know, it's funny you say that because the first thing I told my wife uh, the next morning, she always says, how did it go? And you're the first person I talked about. And as ex I think exactly what I was saying is like, he just feels different. He feels real. He feels organic. I felt like he was really talking to us and not, not to say anything. You know, all the other comics were great that night. But, you know, with you, I hadn't seen you in a while. And I was like, it's just she's just fun to listen to. And I, I think I think that. that's part of it. I but it's true. I think it's part of it. I think it's that realness, a real like. And you're not off. I mean, we, when we feel low energy on stage, we feel like, oh boy, I was real. Hey, you're like your friends, like no. I mean, you were speaking out loud. I mean, it's not. But to us, it feels like we're. <laughs> was I asleep? Did I even say a punchline? But <sighs> no. That, and I think that's it, man. I think there's a tr and maybe it is your you know your sales back up. Maybe it is just being more grounded. Maybe it's seasoning. I don't know. But we all know the, the comics will be up there and just being like talking from the neck up. And you're like, ah, oh, this doesn't feel real. It's, it's you know it's cute, but it's not real. That's a really good way of putting it. It's from the neck up. Yeah. That's, I never even thought about it like that, but you're right. And it's this, you know, I never, I don't know how you feel about this, but like, you know, when people go my act, yeah. right. I never had, I never had a, I never identified with that where it's like, I never thought about it as an act. Like it's me. Like I'm up yeah. there being me. And, and I think that maybe for the first 10, whatever years, that's why it was so difficult was because like, I don't know how to be anybody else but me. Like if, if you handed me a million dollars in a script and said, you got to go play a fucking whatever, a character that was way out of my, you know, whatever. I don't know if I'd be able to do it. Like I just, yeah. I'm me and I can't not be. And I think that my, my like uh, mental state and my comedy, whatever on stageness, whatever you call it, finally have maybe crossed paths a little bit where I can be me and, feel comfortable three sentences without a laugh maybe <laughs> or, or do you know what i mean or not being sure that the next line is gonna yeah hit yeah and you could go like well, i'll find my way back like it'll be okay like i think i know how to do it enough that i can like you know throw a fastball and save the inning if god forbid you know i've walked a few 
but <laughs> but yeah, man. And I, but I think that about you too. But in 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 the way that you do it, in more of like a, you're talking about you, but you're I'm I'm envious of like the, like it's just bang bang. But like you're just jokes jokes. And and you know I'll tell you, I go back and watch some of your Letterman's. Ted Alexandro's Letterman's there's a couple of folks that did late nights that I'm like those are like perfect sets <laughs> and Jesus, I mean thanks. no but I mean like you've done what you did a, you did a how many late nights did you do I did four Letterman's yeah eight you can't reruns yeah damn dude that's I mean I, I wanted to ask you about those if you don't mind like just of course. looking back on that process right I still and, think about them every day let's talk about it <laughs> yeah no please, I mean that's that's the you know, I, I, I've never done a late night and it's still one of my, even though like it, it isn't what it used to be. A letterman oh. back then was, I mean, like you, you've, in my opinion, like you did it, you know what I mean? Like well, if it I all ends, it. like I, I, my, and it's ending. It is for all of us. <laughs> it really is. TikTok's now the fucking exactly. A man. What the hell is going on? But anyway, anyway, not to get, let's stay positive. <laughs> But like, I always wanted to like do a late night because like maybe that would make it real for my grandparents or something like that. You know what I mean? Exactly. Something like, yeah. You know. But I think it's the about, validation. It was the finish line. It was. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So let's talk about the first one that you did and like how the process went and was was it you courting them, them courting you? Like, what was the whole process like <laughs> from like start to finish for you? So if you remember, I as I say, I watch them every day here. Um, I think about, no, it's, it, it was to your point, I grew up, you know, with two older brothers. So Letterman was on TV from the moment I remember just like, first it was Johnny Carson. My parents used to watch and then Letterman, my older brothers love. So, you know, he was the icon. And as you say, it's the Super Bowl as a comic to get on one of those shows. And I tried for years, um, you know, Eddie Brill was the booker and he, he liked me. He was always very good to me. We just, just never felt like I was right. I do do a lot of relationship material and he didn't, you know, at the time that at least wasn't the brand they were really going for. Um, but then eventually the bookers changed. And the way the story goes is uh, I was on the road for about 10 or 12 days, ex came home exhausted to my apartment in New York. Friday night, I had a, it was pouring rain and I had a gig in Long Island City at a club out there, the Laughing Devil, which I don't think exists yeah, anymore. Yeah, I remember it. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, Steve Hofstetter had opened the club. It was the last thing I wanted to do in the world. I was exhausted. I want to go to bed and I didn't want to take two trains to get to a 1030 spot. And I was like, I've never in my life canceled this spot. And, and you don't do it. You, we worked our asses off to get here. And I mean, unless you're uh, on your, in a hospital bed, you don't cancel. And I went to the show there's eight people in the audience and one of them was the brand new booker from letterman and afterward came up and said you know i am uh, my name and here's my card would you like to be on letterman and i kind of I, I was so jaded by that point i kind of like said oh sure and i kind of like was like it was a joke i was like okay i'll take your card and it really was a card from the show and she said, send me what you would do, the five minutes. I really enjoyed your set, 15 minutes. She said, send me sure. a video of what you would do on the show. And I said, no problem. And about a week and a half, I didn't do it. A week and a half later, she follows up with me and goes, I met you, wanted to see a set you haven't sent me. And I was like, Holy I just didn't shit. Think, I didn't think it was real. I was like, I don't think it was, you know, how many times in this business have we been like, oh, you're the best, you're funny, this and that. Yeah, tomorrow and, your whole life's going to change, yeah. Exactly, exactly. That's it. Well, I mean quick a side story i used to work with a manager and he did a showcase in la at the laugh factory and i flew myself out paid for my own hotel he's like this is a big break a lot of industries coming and on the sidewalk afterwards this guy comes up to me hands me a card and goes i'm julia roberts lawyer you'll be needing this soon and hands me his card i call my parents new jersey at three in the morning and wake them up ma dad Julia Roberts' lawyer just told me that I'm going to be needing his card. So, I mean, that was most. I look back; it's the most embarrassing thing. And they're like, "Oh my God, Julia Roberts!" Julia lawyer Roberts' told lawyer. Him he's gonna, yeah, so he handed me his card and said he's going to be famous. <laughs> but the so anyway, back. To, yeah, I mean, yeah, I just yeah, and I, to me, I, I know was, I, I was done. I made it. I I was a, a made man. But so yeah, so I uh, worked on this set, sent him a set. Um, and then the biggest thing was, I think it was Lenny Marcus was the first comic that these new bookers put on. So, cause I thought it was kind of a joke still. I'm like, all right. So I, I just, yeah. it's hard to believe anything after years of rejection, you don't believe much. And then they put Lenny Marcus on and that got my attention. I was like, Oh, 
that's this is real. Lenny. They're, that's my they're, cohort. That's, yeah. Yeah. That's the guy right there. And they're putting them on. They, these people really have they really do work there. And they, you know, <laughs> it's not a hologram. And, yeah, exactly. And so, yeah, I sent them the um, my video. They liked it a lot. They had their notes. We went back and forth. This is April or May. And I made my my debut in uh, August. And all I did for literally that those all those months is if I was doing a 10 minute set or a 45 minute headline set, I opened with that five minutes. And it was all I did. And everyone's like, well, why don't you work it in? I was like, well, why would I do that? Because I'm coming out cold on the show to do it. So why would I work it in the middle of a set when the audience is already warmed up? I'm going to come out. I'm going to do the five. And uh, you you know how that is. You're taking jokes from every subject. So now all of a sudden you've done all your subjects in that five minute set. And I had 40 minutes left to do at these clubs, but I didn't care. I'm like, Letterman's no. more important. Letterman's I'll more important. I'll dig my way out of it. Yeah. And, and, and they're so not I thinking see. that. They're not. The crowd's not thinking that. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, exactly. You literally just like, I, I know I froze up again. Um, it's not, you're not, um, you just literally pulled all of the tips off all your icebergs. Exactly. And then you got to go back and yeah. go like, oh, back to that marriage that I. <laughs> Remember I was talking about, about clothing? <laughs> Here's <laughs> more. Long- Laundry is still crazy, and here's more reasons. <laughs> you. Don't think I'm letting laundry off that easy. <laughs> so, so you do your, you have this five. It's ready. August is your is your date. Yeah, yeah. Walk me through that day. So they, uh, well, the, the leading up to that day, they said be ready, and I was like, holy cow! And I was in Vegas performing for the week, and I was flying home, changing planes in Detroit. Because because back then I had to change planes. I wasn't getting sure. direct. <laughs> and I, I was on it. one of those long Detroit moving walkways when they called and said, you're going to be on. And I just start crying in the airport. Like, just uh... I start crying. And everyone around me is like, Jesus, like, <laughs> just get away from this guy. Uh, but it was the best call that ever. And then from there, you just you not you can't possibly relax you know no no 10 or 12 days away and i'm just it can't relax and it's what are you going to wear and how do you like you just didn't know what to do with yourself i ran the set it had to be 300 times in my apartment just you know just constantly saying because i remember seinfeld saying like you his first set on tonight show he ran so many times that like he couldn't not you just couldn't go wrong like you just it's in you it's it's just muscle memory it's so yeah so i knew i wanted that i knew i didn't want to be up there thinking what's my next line um and then yeah the day of is uh it's surreal because for you it's the greatest moment of your entire career if not your life and for them it's work it's just another day at the office and so they're excited for you. They know that you're, you know, but for them, they're like, yeah, gosh, yeah, I got a coffee. I got to run. I got, I got a kid to get at the school. And, you know, and for you, you're like, hey, everyone, I'm, you know, my, I'm on Letterman today. Uh, so that's a weird energy. And they're, but they're very sweet. They're very supportive. They give you your own little room. And I just sat there in that room, running it, running it, running it, you know, just nervous and excited. Um, and, Are you by and yourself? Yeah, by myself yep you can bring people i didn't i had seen some other comics too like in the green room and i just need to be alone like i didn't need i didn't want okay. energy in fact my second one i did have my brother come back i'm like well now i'm comfortable i'm relaxed and i regret it i was like because he was back there he's taking pictures he's texting his friends he was talking to me i'm like all right this was a mistake get the yep. fuck out of here yeah, yeah shut up yeah. It. Yeah. yeah yeah i need to just be alone even though i do nothing but stare at the wall for now i need that yeah. um but yeah you go out and, uh, you know, he introduces you and you just you leave your body, you know, Paul Schaefer and behind you, Letterman. And he's very polite. He kind of pulls himself away and down in the darkness. So like the audience is not tempted to look at him. Um, but I get one joke in and it hits. I get two or three in and I hear him laugh behind me. And I'll never forget that moment. You're just like that. I know that laugh. That was Letterman laughing. And I just and from there, it just kind of went. And uh, and I didn't really know how I did. I think it went well, but I wasn't sure. And then the next day I was talking to my dad and I was like, I think I killed. And he's like, yeah, you, you, you did. <laughs> I was like, yeah, he said you yeah. did. Yeah. yeah. Because, because it doesn't air that night. We taped Thursday and aired Friday. So I hadn't seen it yet. And I had to wait till that night to just like see it and be like, oh, that went that went well. And you know, of uh. course, we just everything was the nervous, the bite, the lip. Oh, I giggled too much of my own. Like, I did a hundred things I hated. But of course, yeah, but I that's mean, what we do. It would be weird if you didn't, you know what right. I mean? It'd be robotic if you, right. wow. Wow. And then, and then it ends and you walk off and you kind of like get that, like nod of approval from like the, the guy, but with the headphones on and the clipboard and he's like, good job. Right. And then like, 
they see everybody, right? They see literally Johnny Depp in there. They see Chris Christopherson. They see Bruce Springsteen. <laughs> and you're in there. It's your day. And they're like, did they give you any type of like a uh, way to go? Absolutely not. That's the craziest part. <laughs> Absolutely not. When when you are done, that's the other thing. That like I said, it's them. They're just at work, and their job is to get you there. And once you're done, they didn't even show me my my dressing room is on a third floor. No one even helped me get back. So I'm wandering <laughs> the halls of the Letterman Building. I swear to God, I had just been on the show. And once you're done, you're over. Their job's over. You're done. They you don't exist to them. They you know, good job. Thanks. And I'm going up and I couldn't find the stairs. And so <laughs> I no joke. Like finally some like janitor helped me get back to my room because I was like, I don't know where I am. I was like, I was just on the show, I swear. But I am sure if you're, you know, Julia Louis Dreyfus, they helped me get back. But I'm um, no. sure. Not you. Yeah. Not me. Comics. Just... We're the we're the fucking we're on the discount shelf of entertainment, dude. Oh, always. It was and that was and my job was done. They were done. And, and then you walked yeah. out the door into New York. Yeah, I'd, horns beeping and fucking all of it, and your life goes on. You're you're you did Letterman. I did Letterman, yeah, and that and but again, and that was random and nobody then. And then I went. I remember that night. I was uh, went to, went to a bar for some dinner. My parents came, but they lived in Jersey, so they took off. They went home. Everyone was like, "Great job!" And then I was just like, went to a bar and had dinner at the bar, and I was just like, "This is the weirdest thing ever." Because by yourself, by myself, by myself. Yeah, I appreciate so, that. I, I yeah. So many things, so many times in my life, so many things that like, you know, flying to Oregon to interview Ken Kesey, it's like I'm by myself and I like I want to talk to someone. I want to talk to a stranger at an airport bar about this because we're going to go our separate ways and I don't owe them anything afterwards. I and I just want to have like that, like confessional moment and then bye. See ya. Yeah. And it's like those things like probably sitting at a bar going like, yeah, I fuck it. I just did Letterman. Yeah. And they, they cheer some guy who, whatever, <laughs> who is he? It doesn't matter. He cheers as you and he's like, wow, congratulations. And then you're able to like tell a New York stranger something. There's yeah. something to that. That's like just so important. You know what I mean? Like I hundred percent know what you mean. No, it's It is like, I don't owe you anything. You don't owe me anything. And I just I have did. a moment. Like, yeah. Yeah. I told the bartender. I remember telling the bartender. I was like, don't be that guy. I'm like, I'm going to tell him. I'm like, you know what? And I actually, the way I did it, because I was genuinely curious, I said, would you mind tomorrow night? I said, I'm going to be on Letterman. And would you mind, do you have the guide? Because I'd love to see if my name is on the guide, if you, on the TV, you know? And uh, is there a way to like go up? That's and, clever. And look? And, yeah, that was, well, and it was a genuine curiosity. I'm like, how do I, how do I somehow get validation today? It was a pretty bartender. I'll say that, but, <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, yeah. And she went up and she looked and uh, it wasn't, I wasn't there. It wasn't listed. <laughs> as She's like, this, this bar is not, this, this beer's not on me. Sorry. This is, yeah, yeah. No longer. Yeah, nice but that try. was exactly it. Then I went home, went to bed. And then the next night, I went. I drove to the Jersey Shore, um, and I, t I wanted to watch it down there. I watched it by myself at the Jersey Shore. I was so nervous that I was like, I, my yeah, family was like, city. yeah. I was like, I want to go to the beach. I want to like that's it was been my happy place. I've been going, growing up, going to the Jersey Shore. I was like, I want to watch it down there. Um, I want to watch it by myself, and then I'll call I'll call you guys after. I called my parents after, but yeah, that was it, man. Wow, um, man. Yeah, yeah. Oh, so that's so great. That's so. See, I'm so glad that you had that opportunity and like. The set crushed and, 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 oh, and thank you. All like, and then from there, they like kind of like, was it more of like a courting, like, hey, I'd love to come back sometime? Or was it like a follow up, thank you, whatever, like, we loved you, come back soon? It was both. I just, I, the moment, I mean, I was maybe 12 hours later, I was working on the second set. Like, right away, I was like, that was fun. And they seemed to like me. I'm not going to wait to be asked. I'm just going to keep sending. But they also made it clear that we liked you a lot. The uh, the executive producer of the show uh, sends you a letter, you know, in the mail, just thanking you for your appearance. And wow. it was just everything was very validating. And so I said, all right, well, I mean, you know how we, this hard this business is. You get 99 no's. And the one time you get maybe something that's positive, I just like focus all your energy. So that's all I did for the next. This is 2012. And he retired in 2015. So all I did was for those two and a half years before he was, was work on sets and send them to him. And uh, here's a fun story. So I got on four times and every time I got on, I just went home and started writing again. And um, the fifth set, they said, send us the fifth set if you want. But he was retired. He had announced his retirement. And it's going to be, you know, not a lot of slots. Everyone's coming back. Norm McDonald. And they and, yeah. yeah. 
I mean, and they approved the set. They're like, if there's room or there's a fallout, we'll, you know, we'll let you know. And there wasn't, which was a bummer. So the day that he retired, I sent that set to, I guess, Conan's people. And the response I got was, it's funny, but we prefer something you would do on Letterman. <laughs> oh, oh, oh my god that was literally the fifth letter of set approved word by way yeah yeah so it's that's just, it's the just, fucking and, oh my god. and from there by the way could not get the time of day from any other late night show it was like oh you're one of letterman's boys and it's almost like there's an arrogance about some of the other shows at the time at least because they were like ah we you know it's we don't do what he does we're different in some you know yeah what? I, it was weird. I couldn't. That's not like, oh, you pitched for the Yankees. So I guess. Yeah. Yeah. yeah you, so we're not. Yeah. We don't and, need you and, here at the Braves. And to this day, I've had some I've had some strong sets that I've sent out and just gotten nothing. You know, uh, Jimmy has his people that he likes. And, you know, you get all those answers. But you're like, all right, well, whatever. Uh, but to your point, it's not really as meaningful anymore. I didn't get a sitcom. I got more work. I got corporates. I got clubs that were going to book me, did book me. So it definitely helped me get more work. But I remember there was an ICM agent that told me if you had done that set 15 years ago, you'd have a sitcom the next day. And oh, isn't that nice like, to hear? If. <laughs> That's you. always nice. If if you I had yeah. a guy the other day. I, well, not the other day. I, I was in Houston at the improv and I was opening for Big J. And uh, this guy comes up and he goes, man, Mike Fenoya, he goes, your jokes are tight. You're so likable up there and no one gives a shit about you. <laughs> And I was like, and this person standing there goes, dude, what the fuck? And he goes, I know, right? Like he doubled down. He's like, how does no one like him? Like, I don't get it. No one gives a shit about Mike Fenoya. And it's like, wow, you're what the voice looks like. You're, like my- you, you're the guy. You get back in my ear. I, yeah, what am I going to do without you? And he's like, I don't get it, dude. I think you're great, but nobody cares. Like, I just, why aren't you on this? Why aren't you on podcasts? Why aren't you? On-? Literally, like, all of the questions I ask myself at night laying in bed, this <laughs> dickhead in fucking Houston just, like, it just, sums it up. just did- summed it up. And I'm like, yeah, man, I don't know. Like, I, I thank you. Yeah. Like, I don't know. Yeah. How do I? Sure. Yeah, no, I'm yeah. Not I mean, sure. can you even get angry at that? I mean, just like, yeah, that's a he goes, my dad to... loves you, but he's dying of cancer. <laughs> that's literally what he said. And I was like, wow, this is getting better oh and better. I, I, but it's that th- like, yeah, like, oh, if you did this 15 years ago, you'd have a sitcom. Yeah, yeah. I but had you know, a club owner. Well, go ahead, sorry. No, no, please. I was just going to say, I had a club owner once, almost do the same thing to me, calls me up. I used to work this club. I'm not going to say it, but used to work this club a lot. It's a good club. And when I was first starting out, young, energetic, all this stuff, you know, good looking, a lot skinnier. And just like, ah, this guy's booking. And, uh, you know, he's doing well and he could do a split week. I'll headline Thursday, Sunday. I'll open, you know, feature for who the big name Friday, Saturday. And slowly, you know, they just stopped using me. And he calls me out of nowhere. It's like two or three during the pandemic. And he just starts complimenting me. He's like, I just, you know, I saw your name come across with Facebook. Haven't seen you or talked to you in such a long time. And, you know, God, how many years since you worked here? Amazing comedian. Always so funny. Your posts make me laugh. Your clips make me laugh. He just starts pouring this stuff on me. I'm like, wow. And I know, you know, it's a random call from a club owner. How often do you get that? Yeah. Everything about you is amazing. The funniest guy, this and that. Staff loves you. Crowds love you. Comment cards always go. But you just don't sell any tickets, so I can't book you. And I was like, what? I was like, why did you call me? Did you? I mean, what? That was the craziest I haven't heard from this guy in eight years. <laughs> and that was it. Just that you know, you just. Don't I just sell wanted any to tickets. let you know I'm not going <laughs> to <Yeah>. book you. <laughs> That's exactly. Did you call me after seven or eight years to tell me you're not going to book me? <laughs> Imagine like a, a woman that you date, son of a fucking bitch. You imagine that's a like good the, freeze. I know, yeah. Can you imagine like a woman that like you dated once that's just like, hey, I just wanted to let you know. I always loved I always loved the way that you made eggs. I always your car was always clean. I like that you knew how to iron a shirt, but like I just want to let you know, like I'm never gonna fuck you again. Never ever again. <laughs> it's like what? I just wanted to let you know that. Bye. <laughs> What's that Sam Morell joke that he does? He goes, uh, you know, he met his girl after the show. He starts you know, chatting her up and everything. And uh, she's like, you know, by the way, I have a boyfriend. And he's like, okay, that's cool. And she's like, but even if I didn't, you're not my type. He's like, yeah, you didn't need to. You didn't need to. <laughs> <laughs> you add that, that in. Yeah, yeah seriously. Yeah, gonna... <laughs> so ridiculous. I saw something recently where I was like, and it's funny because like I know the owner of the club, so I'm kind of breaking balls a little bit. But like on sometimes on websites now, it says like special event. 
special yeah. event, special event. And then like, I'm not a special event, you know, like, yeah. I don't know why yeah. it's some deal with them with the door and I don't care, whatever. And, uh, he goes, I call him and I'm like, so what's this? Like, how do I be a special event? Like, what's the, you know? <laughs> and he goes, well, I think you're special. And I'm like, Oh, <laughs> could you be more condescending? I know you're my friend and you're breaking balls, but, and this has happened recently a lot where people go, you're a comic. You can handle it where they like Love joke it. around about stuff. And it's like, do you understand that we're the ones that can't handle it? The most fragile. <laughs> we're so busted up inside and hurt that like, no, I'm off the clock. <laughs> yeah. Don't fucking hit me with yeah. you're a comic. Yeah. You can handle it. It's like, uh, no, I'm, like, yeah. I'm so busted up inside that it's like you and my mom think I'm special. That's it. That's yeah. it. Literally. That's it. <laughs> But it's so funny that you say, like, I'm so glad that you had, okay, really getting annoying now. I think that's five of them. Sorry, Michael. I I really Mm -hmm. don't. I mean, it's all thumbs ups at least, but uh, it's all positive. Yeah. yeah. You were giving me the apologies to the people. Yeah. Yeah, I know. People watching must be like, all right. Well, so here's (laughs) the thing you know, you talk about that laugh and you know that it's Dave's laugh, right? Yeah, I had a mm-hmm. I had a Dave laugh that made me. I I want to ask you about this, like ha, the moments when you are reminded that you're there on stage doing it, and in the moment you're able to go like, "Yeah, I'm actually like it's happening right now," and like yeah. t- you, the, the, like the universe gives you a second to enjoy. Yeah. what's happening you know what i'm saying i was yeah. opening up for Attell brought me to open for him at the wilbur in boston oh, and fabulous he was standing on the side of the stage and i had like a one two knockout with like just two jokes got big applause and and big laughter and i heard him side stage laughing and i kind of had just one of those moments where i can enjoy it yeah and I just kind of scanned the crowd and they were clapping and laughing. And I looked over and he's like, I could see his silhouette and he's smoking a cigarette and like just smokes going up above the shadow. And I could see his shoulders kind of going up and down and he's like <laughs> laughing uh, and it's a tells laugh. And I'm like, yeah. I'm making him laugh. I'm making his crowd laugh. I'm getting applause. And it was just a, a moment of like, as, take take me now like this is literally yeah. it like this is all i ever i couldn't if you asked me to think of anything bigger or better a suitcase yeah. full of money whatever like that is it like when you get that validation like for you to say to me like after my set like i really love watching you do what you do it it, it me that's the fucking thing that means the world to us 100 yeah when, when a comedian that you like and respect likes you and the tell is the i mean he's the mount rushmore for me so yeah that's unbelievable that's nothing that's, better yeah that's but the even audience. You, look, yeah okay. but you, yeah the audience is the audience <laughs> so, that's us doing our job right but like yeah. if i come back to the dugout and and i like took a nice swing but it was a deep fly out Right. If you if you're in the dugout and you're like, that was a good chop, dude. That was a nice cut. Like you paid attention. You know what you're looking for. You like that. That's to me the thing that really. And for you to come up to like, you didn't have to say anything nice the other night, but you did. Yeah. And you were just like, dude, I love watching your set. I I feel the same way about you. And it's just those those are the things that really mean the most. Do you have a lot of those moments on stage where you're able to like enjoy it and enjoy what we do? Do you get what I mean? Yeah. Like, um, not, not enough, probably. Like, I, yeah, I know it's exactly what you mean. Those moments where you're just like, man, this is fun. Just let's enjoy this moment. Be present. You know, don't panic about what you're going to say next. Don't worry about that person who might be chatting. Like, just you're in it. Everything's great. I, I don't get enough of them. Um, and I, and part of it now is I got, you know, I'm married and I had a baby. And so every time I'm on stage now, I, I have so much material I want to work on. Like I used to just relax and enjoy performing. And now it's like, well, if I'm out and I'm paying for a babysitter and this and that, I got to make a lot. I got to be productive. I got to get stuff done. I got to come out of here with three jokes that might have potential. So I'm not, I haven't been relaxed on stage for the last year. And I'm glad we're having this conversation because it's a good reminder for me to be like, oh no, have fun because the audience <laughs> picks up on that. Like, yeah. I, I, you know, the, like I had a set, my wife finally stopped by, hadn't seen me in a while and she stopped by 
um, and to watch. And she's just like, you didn't smile. What? Like you were up there, just like not like serious and like like and the audience just pick up on your energy. Like you don't look like you were having fun. You you know you used to like smile and be silly up there, and now you just look like you were you know at work or something. And I was like, oh right. shoot, because because I, I was because I was in my head and I was tired from the day and. But yeah, I, I think I mean to I, I envy those comics who do do that, who have that just they just look like they're having fun at all times. You know, Bert Kreischer or uh, some of those guys. You're like that guy's just that guy's up there having fun, and he doesn't care about the silence, doesn't care about anything. He's just having fun. Yeah, it really is pretty unbelievable the way that like some folks can just like ha- like turn it on, turn it off. Yeah. yeah, like like whatever's happening off stage, they're able to just kind of like compartmentalize yep. that and it's like time to go make them laugh and and i i'm blown away by that stuff and it's yeah you know, you're backstage enough at times where it's like i'm with people it get you know i get the, the impractical joker guys have like brought me out to do like theaters with them and arenas and stuff like that you know and like wow. and i'm like the hell am i doing here like the whole time up is just that imposter shit that's like yeah you yeah. do not belong at radio city <laughs> music hall right now like you don't <laughs> And then you get out there and it's like, and I never had that. And I almost wonder if it's kind of like, it's definitely a curse, but I think every curse maybe is a little bit of a blessing. If you, you know, like it makes you appreciate, like, I don't know, like, like it, it's it. I remember when I was a little kid, <laughs> my uncle's wedding, my two cousins and I made this plan to break dance in front of all of the, we went and told the DJ <laughs> And we're like, play like some, you know, we're going to go break dance. We went and told every adult, get on the dance floor, get on the dance floor. We're going to, we're going to do a break dance thing. <laughs> and when it was time to go break dance, they pushed me out to break dance and then they ran away. <laughs> and I was left in a circle of adults that I was terrified of and looking, looked up to. And I had to break. And I think to this day, Michael, I'm the only one that ever break danced and cried at the same time you know but there but i you know what i felt i felt this thing of like i can't leave like i gotta stay out here and finish the song <laughs> and, and, and i and i'm just like oh, and i'm trying to <laughs> i'm spinning in my own tears and i'm doing yeah, the robot 19 20 oh my, no oh i'm kidding God. i'm kidding i'm kidding i was like maybe eight Oh, Eight. this is priceless. There's yeah, no video of this, is there? There's pictures. There's no oh. video, but I have. I'll show you pictures. Please I'm like do. puffy faced and tears and like my stupid like ball oh haircut, my... and I'm <laughs> in my tuxedo amazing. and everyone's laughing and as I'm spinning, I'm seeing my uncle's just like ha ha, ha you know, like it's in my head. It's just nightmares. <laughs> Three sixty of Three sixty a shame. Just a fucking. <laughs> Literal, just whirlpool. That is amazing. But you did the show. But I stayed in it. And I think about those times where it's like, I go out in a place where I don't think I belong. And, and yeah. hey, I did Nassau Coliseum with them. And I'm like out there Jeez. like, the fuck am I doing at Nassau? I've been to concerts. <laughs> and my wife is standing in the front going like, slow down, like pace <laughs> yourself, you know, because I'm just <laughs> yelling. But I, but I think about like, you're out there, like, do it the best that you can do, even though you don't think you're supposed to be there. Yeah. You're, you're you belong out here more than any of them do. Absolutely. So at the least you're going to be better than, you know, <laughs> than the people. Yeah, that's true. The tricks that's... we have to play on ourselves to like, because we won't let ourselves believe like, Oh, you're good enough to be, you know what I mean? Like, yeah. and then when you get yeah. a validation thing from a, a peer, it's like, that's the shit that just, God, that'll yeah. that'll keep you going. Absolutely. No, and I think comics are generally lower self esteem. We I don't belong, like you say, imposter. But also, I would argue this type of comedy, right? You and I, we care very much about our jokes and our words, and we like the, the, what's important. We, we're writers, and it's not to suggest that other comics who do large venues are not writers. But there's a, t- you know, like I, for me, like a, a Gotham, that's a great audience, and that's almost <sighs> too big for me. I mean, sometimes oh, like sixty to eighty or hundred, right in there. Like here the we go, is listen, like, yeah. the seller, yeah, listen yeah. to these words, enjoy them, we appreciate. And then I could see you, know, you get in a large space like that, be like, oh, do I have to fill this room now? That's our Coliseum. I have to, do I have to jump around like a monkey or what do I, you know, what am I supposed to do on this stage to be entertaining? Um, but you yeah. Feel this then, big. You feel I, this big. You must. Yeah. You must, right? Um, I remember looking up and I saw like the scoreboard, like the Jumbotron thing. <laughs> and I'm looking up at like a Billy Joel banner that says Jesus. like how many times he's played there right. or whatever. The, the, the guy who would bring us up on stage goes, are you ready for the impractical jokers? And the place goes fucking bananas. And then he goes, 
all right, but first we got to bring up, which is thanks. Right. Right. And they go, you, you know, you've seen him on the show, blah, blah, blah. And I, and I normally a walk out, even at a theater is what 30 yards, whatever. I felt like I had like a hundred yard dash to get to the microphone. It's amazing. So like by the time I'm halfway to the mic, the applause stops. <laughs> So now I'm in like a dead silent Nassau. I just hear my shoes hitting the wood of Nassau. And I'm like, fuck. And I just kind of start to jog and I'm like getting nervous. And I'm like, don't (laughs) fall, which is when you fall. So I'm just like, okay. And I'm like, hold on. I'm getting here. And I'm like, what do you say, guys? How are you? The the guys are right back there and they laugh, they Uh, clap and whatever. But I was just like, yeah, here in headlights. But I had to learn a whole new cadence because it's like, you got to let the joke go all the way to the back of the room, back of the room and yeah. all the way back. And then you got to like, you know, give it time to, yeah, it's, it's insane. It's a whole other. And then I remember the night after that being at like the lounge at the fat black pussycat <laughs> where literally someone's like foot is on my shoe. Right. <laughs> and I'm like, this is where I want to be. <laughs> you know what with, I mean? Like, this, this is, is... <laughs> this is it. I had one of, uh, my letterman's i went down to broadway comedy club which is literally down the street yeah. i had a spot that night and so i shot letterman at 5 30 and then i went down for a seven o'clock spot and this is my third letterman so you know the the, the, the pomp and circumstance was over the i told my parents they were i was going to be on the show do you want to come they said who else is on the show <laughs> <laughs> oh that's that hilarious was, i mean that was there so all the novelty <laughs> was over of being on letterman and I went, I remember I did the set and I did very well at Letterman. And I went down the street to Broadway and just flatlined the same exact five minutes like for, you know, 14 people at two, you know, whatever, 7 p.m. And I just remember being like, this feels right. Like, this, this is, is grounding. This, yeah, yeah, this is comedy. Yeah. God, 90 I love minutes it. Ago. And I said that I was never like being that comic. But at the end of the set, I was like, by the way, those jokes are going to be on Letterman tomorrow night. Please watch me. And you saw everyone be like, boy, he's really desperate. He's not, you know, <laughs> like, this guy's delusional. You think that's going to be on TV? Oh, yeah. Jesus Christ. <laughs> Hilarious. Oh, man. Uh, I'm so glad that we had a chance to hang. This like warms me up, dude. Anytime. Um, I see you. You're just like you're, you're one of the good ones. You know what I mean? Like uh, there's a lot you. of us, but you you're you're a good spirit and a and a good dude. And I'm I I appreciate you spending some time. I hope we could do it again soon. And, uh, and it's absolutely. always a pleasure to see you. Well, I think you know, like spirits attracts. So I yeah, I wouldn't be here if I didn't feel the same way. I really appreciate you having me. And of course. now that I got uh, you know home with a baby here, I got a lot. A lot of this kind of time sitting in this room. So please, come, let's do come it again. Me. Yeah. yeah. Anytime you need a lifeline, man, you hit me up. I, and I'm going to figure out this damn freaking freezing up shit. So, but all thumbs up. My background. All thumbs up. Two all thumbs, thumbs up. up. Can Five you tell? Times. Can you tell everybody that's uh, watching and listening where they can find all your stuff so they can support you? Yeah, man. My website's michaelsomerville.com. But I would say biggest right now is Instagram. It's uh, just at Michael Somerville uh, with Somerville S O M E R V I L L E. I post new videos there every week. I've got a couple different web series that I make and post them. They're getting a lot of likes and views. So they're very I think funny. that's if you want to see me, yeah, be funny. Plus a lot of the Letterman clips. I cut up the old Letterman's and I post them periodically. So you want to see me go there. Right on. Thank you so yeah. much, Mike. Thank you. Thank you, we'll everybody. See you. We'll see you soon. Thumbs up. Guys, Let's see if I can do it. To... <laughs> oh, I did it. <laughs> I'll see you in your car. Bye, Mikey. <laughs> <Take it. laughs>